Well, there is one of the first signs of spring, the spring fever. I suppose most people, that's the first frog they hear because there are more of them. They, they sing in all kinds of different bodies of water. Do they sing up onto the shore as well? Well, they usually in some little bits of old grass along the edge of the water. But you have to be awful careful if you're going to see any. I know. I, I've tried to find them in the grass, and you go to where the sound is, and the frog is somewhere else. Well, usually they, they stop singing entirely when you begin to splash in the water. You have to stand there and just wait before they'll begin singing again. They are, must be very tiny if you can't find them. Well, they're only about a half an inch long, but when they sing, you'll see the great big bulge in their throat. They have a great big air sac they pop out. And how do they make such a powerful noise with such a small uh, apparatus? Well, it's not so small compared to the body because this air sac is... It's really quite large, but they don't, the air moves back and forth over that voice box, so they don't have to take it in from the outside. You mean the same store of air goes back and forth and is used again and again? Yeah. That's the way they can even make the noise underwater. Like a horn? Well, when they make the noise underwater, like does it come out above water too? Well, I didn't believe it does. I couldn't say much about that. That'd be kind of hard to observe, but so many of them going at once. What's yeah. that funny now? Yeah, these frogs are playing well, I don't blues. know, but I know that the porcupines stand over there. Well, I think some porcupines fighting. I, I once saw a couple of porcupines fighting. They made noise just like that. There they go. I think they're standing up, kind of boxing at each other. Gee, I think it'd be rather a tough fight, those two armored fellows. Well, the one I saw, one of them got his whole mouth full of quill, and he looked awful miserable, and that was what the, the noise was. He was kind of wailing about all these quills sticking in his mouth. Were you able to save him? Well, I didn't think I could do anything about it, but I kept edging closer and closer, and finally I got right beside him and pulled some of the quills out of his mouth. Did he appreciate that? Well, he kind of licked his lips and moved off. They're not very emotionally responsive, uh, responsive these porcupines. Kind of dull fellows, I'd say. <laughs> but this one, I think, a lot better off than I got through with them. Yeah, kind of slow moving. This pond has a steep, rocky shore on the further side. And the porcupines seem to live in under the rocks. That's where they like to live, is dens under the rocks. Particularly in winter. You know, the spring peepers here, one spring peeper will start, and then all the rest will follow him. Is uh, any special order in that? Is the one at the top of the uh, chirp order, as one might say? Well, maybe you'd know more about that than I would. <laughs> I know often, with, often with birds, there's one at the head of the peck order. Well, maybe there is. I hear a wood frog uh, beginning in there. Wood frog. They hear that harsh noise? Yes, that grating. Yes, yeah, that's it. The wood frog's actually the first one in spring to begin to sing. They they begin to males begin to sing and there's still a lot of snow and in the woods and maybe some ice in the pools of water where they actually laying their eggs. Hmm. What is it that um, triggers them, the amount of daylight? Well, it usually takes the first warmish day, and you know, about the first of April, and the, the males all come to the pond, make tremendous noise. Well, here's something tuning up now. That, uh, I believe, is a fowler's toad. Well, that, that's not quite, that's a strange noise, isn't it? It certainly is, and you hear that snoring noise. What's that? That's a pickerel frog. Well, it seems to be an awful lot of things in this one pond here. Yes. Well, as a matter of fact, this was not all recorded on the same day. Oh. Well, I was... Those fowler's toads, how do you tell one of them from one of the ordinary toads? Well, they make kind of a shriek. Kind of a high-pitched, unmusical shriek. That doesn't sound very musical to me. No, it's not. 
They tell me you can uh, you can tell these fowler's toads from the regular toad, can't you? Oh yes, there's a regular toad. There's a regular toad coming soon, and it is more melodious and a much longer trill. This is quite a short trill, only two seconds. Well, they're certainly making an awful lot of noise there. What are they making all that noise for? Well, all these frogs, you see, they're about probably about eight or ten males to every female. Now they get to the water and make all this noise to attract other males and attract the females so they'll all come to the same place to breed. And when the females get there, they find a great many males after them. That's a green frog there now. Oh yeah, all the green frogs are everywhere. They yeah. seem to be... This one, this here is the American toad, this trail. Well, that's a lot pleasanter sound than that other one. Oh, it is, and it continues much longer. But you know, they will, you'll hear that sound for several months in the pond. Uh, does it one toad stay several months there making that noise? Well, I think they come at different times whenever the weather's good. They like to move particularly when it's a rainy night. So they keep coming from different times. To, they're not very particular. They'll come to any kind of a pool or sand pit or... You know, it doesn't always have to be a permanent body of water. You know what's fun with these toads is to go and pick up some of them and if you happen to have a garden pool, bring it back to your house and then you can hear them all night long right in your garden. If you don't bring any females, then the males will just keep singing for a long time. What do, what do the males eat during all that time? Well, they're not much interested. They're more interested in singing than eating, but pretty hard to starve a toad in a garden, you know. Well, I know that and they, all the little young ones hatch out in those pools. Yes, well, it takes them some weeks. They lay thousands of eggs. One toad may lay 5,000 eggs for an awful lot of little tadpoles. When the tadpoles hatch out of the eggs, they don't feed for, for several days. They just hang around. And then they get mouth parts and live on little green algae and things. And then when they turn into the little toads, the toads pan out all over the countryside. Yes, there's an awful lot of them move out of the water and build on the shore. They're just like little insects almost, but they're so small when they come out. Yes, if you mow your grass when they're coming out, you get hundreds of them. Now there are quite a few green frogs in there. Yes, the green frogs seem to be everywhere all season. Well, they're nice frogs, but they make a pleasant sort of banjo note. They sound like a plucking the string of a banjo. They're a lot of fun to have in a garden pool, too, because they'll often stay in a small pool. And you can hear this all summer. More at least half the summer, they still make it. But they lay their eggs on the water, even keep them floating on the surface of the water. Really, when we think in New England of a frog, it's a green frog almost universally. You connect with the name. It's um, spread almost everywhere, isn't it? Yes, you not only find it in, in ponds, but it also may be in brooks, and then it, it uh, pops around through meadows, often will go quite a ways from water and wet weather and wet days. But there's another one here now. You listen a minute. Hear that? Well, that's a wonderful sound. That's the bullfrog. The different ones have different notes. Well, that big booming sound is the bullfrog, and he's farther out in deeper water. The green frogs are around the shore, but the bullfrog is the real water frog. He lives in the water all his life. He doesn't come ashore most of the time. He just floats out there and makes this big noise. Are those great big pollywogs you see, bullfrog pollywogs, ones about four inches long? Yes, when they're that big, the bullfrog pollywog may take two and even three years to turn into a frog, but the green frog tadpoles are pretty big too. They may get several inches long and take two years. Listen, listen. Looks like a wood duck coming in. Yes, that was quite a call. I think it is. There are some little tiny ducklings running across the 
lily pads and jumping into the water. Well, if they keep away from those bullfrogs, they say bullfrogs can eat small ducklings. I wouldn't doubt it. They're awful big mouths, those bullfrogs are. Well, those little ducklings weren't any larger than a mouse. Well, I found a bullfrog once that just swallowed a whole big crayfish, so I guess they mouths are big enough to take one of those little ducklings if it's too close. The bullfrogs, they're deep water frogs, aren't they? That's right. They, they're really an aquatic frog. And they, call, they sing best, they're just as skipping dark. You can hear this noise several miles from a pond that carries so far. Do they make it the same way with a big blown up air sac? No, you don't see the air sac on these big frogs, but they're, they are swelling up inside. Uh, but more inside their body, so it's not so obvious. Is the bullfrog the one that's famous for frog legs in restaurants? Yes, he's the one they eat, although they sometimes eat meadow frogs too, but the bullfrog is the one that has the biggest legs. I understand they raise them on farms too. Well, I wish they'd do that. I hate to have people kill these frogs in our pond, but I like to hear them. How many frogs do you imagine there are there? You hear a great many different notes together. Well, I think they're spaced out. They kind of have territories, the pond. But there are just so many of them around the pond, they all kind of make so much noise. They all kind of run in together. You mean each bullfrog has a territory just the way birds do? Well, I, that's what I'm told. And I, the way they're where you see them out there, I believe it. Well, it's about the most melodious sound there is. I yes. still like those little banjo string green frogs. You remember we used to go fishing horn pounding out there on Great Hill Pond? And, oh, yeah. Well, we ran out with a, just an old flat bottom boat and a little kerosene lamp. Right. Now, you remember in the dark when we were catching horn pound how those frogs used to sing? Yeah. Those bullfrogs. Oh, yeah. It just uh, made the whole night come to life. It was wonderful. Yeah, well, there was a lot of life there with all them mosquitoes and things, too. But <laughs> right there in the dark nights, you know, bullfrogs making off all right. I hear, I hear in the background another note there. Well, that's the, well, that's the uh, tree frog. Well, the, they sing only at night, the tree frog? Well, they know they may sing during the day too, but they, they really have two kinds of notes. They one you hear in summer just up in the trees before a thunderstorm, but these are probably breeding over there and come to the water to breed. Well, it's uh, just about dark now, and they're yeah. just starting. We ought to hear some. Just starting. We ought to hear some. Just starting. We ought to hear some more here, pretty soon. What is the uh, tree frog? Is it a little frog with special feet so it can climb trees? No, oh, it's a beautiful little thing. It's about an inch and a half long, and he's colored just like lichens on the trunk of a tree. And they sit very close, so it's very hard to see them. Oh, there. There they go. Oh. Hear that, hear that bar now? I, I'd like to call mm. them when I was a boy. I'm going to call them, see if they'll answer. I think he will. Now those tree frogs are more of them singing. These tree frogs, you know, have little disc pads on their toes so they can climb up a pane of glass. Do the tree frogs live mostly in the trees or mostly in the water? Oh, they only come to the water to breed for a few weeks in spring. They spend their time on Often they'll sit in one place in the tree for a long time. They have their food come to them, whatever they catch. 
Well, do they catch little tiny insects? Well, they can even catch things big as grasshoppers. They got, all these frogs have pretty big mm. mouths, so they can stuff a lot into them. So they live in the woods most all summer? Yes, they're out in the woods. You can hear them. They're un very unusual for a frog to make any noise any other time of year than a greeting. But tree frogs are exception. They, they make this strange noise from, and even in summertime, sometimes a aeroplane going overhead will start them going, or a coming thunderstorm, something like that. Well, I know that's true of other frogs and toads, if you want to record them, you wait till a propeller plane goes over, and that will start them all going. And tree frogs do the same. It's terribly hard to find things like a tree frog because they're ventriloquists. You go just where you hear the noise coming from, and then you find that it's some other place. How is that? How, how does that work anyway? Is it a protective system of nature? Well, I think it must be a protective system because they make an awful lot of noise and they would be, they're pretty helpless. They'd be exposed to all sorts of predators if they didn't do that. Um, do they favor any particular kind of wood? Well, just the I think, well, I think I usually find them in hardwoods. Damp woods. Not so much in pine woods. Well, I happen to have them, don't happen to find them there. Their color is more the color of gray bark and lichens, but they can change it quite a bit from light to dark. Do they keep that up all night long? Oh, no, no, only when they're, only when they're breeding and not lay their eggs. There's the barn owl again. Well, I guess time we went.